Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is FTB Stoneblock 3. Today, I'm going to be kind of working on a bit of everything, same as usual, but I've been coming up with uh, some, some better alternatives. Uh, I moved the old invention that we did from the previous episode over here. As you can see, it is now... Um, I mean, I, I wanted to make the pipes a little bit visible. There's like one or two in the back that aren't, but I, I didn't want them to like stick out and block passageways either. And this works pretty good. You guys did tell me that there are push, excuse me, push and pull upgrades here for the uh, drawers, which is great. But more or less, I need push and pull upgrades on roosts, which isn't really happening. Um, I, I suppose I could put those like on these, but it's for getting things like the iron from here into this, and this doesn't have a, a pull upgrade, you know, something like that. But still, it's good to know that those things are uh, exist. As you can tell, I've been doing a little decorating because we have steel in mass quantities, and I'm not too bothered with it at the moment. Uh, I've been <laughs> fighting a bunch of mobs and uh, upgrading a bunch of stuff. I've got my stuff uh, better enchanted. I also have a sword. Um, it doesn't do quite as much damage as the Paxel does, but it does a sweeping, and I've got Sweeping Edge 3 on it, so it's pretty darn good. Um, I went through almost all of my XP reserves just getting this stuff enchanted up and occasionally doing that. I also found a pretty... yeah, you can see all the stuff that I rerolled. Uh, I also found a really cool book, here it is, uh, that I got from a wandering trader that popped in. It's the Tome of Enchanting. So if I have something that I want to enchant in here and I don't like the choices, all I do is sneak right click with this book and it will re-roll those at the cost of a little bit of XP. Uh, so you probably saw my XP drop down a little bit. That's it. I mean, it's a pretty neat little item and it definitely helped save me some time and effort with uh, re-rolling. These are some of like my leftover good enchantment books. I have some more in there, but as you can tell, I, I did some redecorating. Uh, these are just steel scaffolds that have been recrafted a couple times. Uh, I put them around in a few different places. Haven't done anything with the chickens. It's been nice actually not having to do anything with the chickens. And I did change out my uh, faucets for fluid pipes with uh, filters on some of them. I mean, this one here, I, I didn't even actually change that. Let's switch this. Actually, no, I don't want to do that because that's going to... Wait, yeah, I do. Why, do... Why doesn't this... Why isn't that set to that? I, I forgot. Well, here, I will show you what I've been doing. Uh, if I look up advanced and I grab one of these, I can put this in here. Uh, actually, I don't even need it to be advanced. Let's switch that out. We'll go with basic because I've been getting those from the bees as well. And I can put this in here instead. And then it turns the redstone stuff on. Uh, redstone mode on when powered. So if I turn this on, it will dump out any contents from inside into this. Otherwise, I turn it off. And then I've got the same thing over here, but I've also got this filtered underneath. So we've got a backup once this is full around the uh, the tank itself. It'll start filling up the jumbo tank, which is empty. Hello, you're here to give me loots? Thank you. You probably also notice it's much brighter in here. That's because I took one of these feral flare lanterns and I put it on top of a wooden post from Immersive Engineering. And it's it just lights up darker areas anywhere in the nearby area, so I don't need to worry about mobs quite as much. I don't think it reaches up high enough into my mob farm because it still seems to be doing good. Oh, thank you for all the all the stuff. Also, I got myself another villager. Um, a few, in fact, because the first one that I got was killed by one of those frickin' iron golems. Actually, not the first one. The second one I got. This guy was the first one, and then I, I used him to make... Uh, some others. Let's see if I can actually get in here. So we've got we've got a bunch of reserves if I need more villagers. Um, and I started making them and I got a, another one while I was waiting for this guy to to tra transform. Um, so then I put the, him in here and I started transforming him. <laughs> the ones that I took these two, put them in the back, uh, started breeding them and uh, luck, as luck would have it, while this guy was transforming, a golem showed up right here and killed him before he could transform. So yeah, this this is like the fourth one now, I think. I think. I, I haven't given this guy a, trans, uh, a, pro, a, a, blah, a profession yet. But the, uh, this guy, I figured I'd give it a try with the circuit table to get an electrician, which, yeah, I, I get LV wire coils for one emerald each, which I don't have to worry about microcrafting at least. Same thing with HV wire cables. Um, 
And he's a master now, so I was able to get a few other things, like parts of a Faraday suit. But it wasn't the things that I was really hoping to see there. Uh, I actually wanted to have a, uh, a shader villager, but you have to have shaders in order to make a shader villager. Yeah, it was kind of annoying. Things to work on today. Uh, I was going to try and start on... Oh, right. Batania. Uh, I... I was told by you guys a really great tip that the, the repair talisman doesn't even need to be in my belt slot. That's just a convenience thing. If I go in here, we could potentially start making some really nice things. Um, I wanted to get a little bit of Batania and continue on a little bit more with um, some immersive engineering. I don't know how much we're going to get through today. I doubt we're going to get through all of it because I did have to rethink my process. Plant oil and I think I had bioethanol, but it turns out I can't get bioethanol without going to the nether section and the whole point of making this tunneler was so that i would use it to get to <laughs> that section so I, I was like nope nope that doesn't make sense so we're going to try for ethanol instead but that aside we need to make a few runes so that i can make myself a sojourner's sash which will give me step assist and a speed increase as uh, i'm running around the base there we go one mana spreader and you know i'll just put it here for now and i know that i've got my wand here is it set on bind mode there we go bind mode this to here i don't think that it's actually working the way that i was hoping it would but that's that'll work just fine regardless because i could just set it over here if i need to but i will still try this um so let me get the ingredients for some of these runes that i need for the sojourner's sash because i need a rune of air and a rune of earth and i've been getting mana steel ingots from bees but you can also just toss some iron into a mana pool and, and get it that way Okay, I've got a few of the items, but I just need that. And I think I need some sugar or something along those lines to make the mana powder. There we go. And then that automatically triggers this because a little bit of mana was used, which is fine. Uh, then I take all the ingredients, a uh, block of coal, mana powder, mana steel, brown mushroom, and a stone. That That's andesite. Oh, I dropped it accidentally on here because I've got a transmutation thing under here um, uh, or an alchemy catalyst, which uh, it's just made with some living rock brewing stands and a mana pearl, which is a, a, an ender pearl tossed in a mana pool. And this will sometimes transform one thing into another if you drop it in that pool. But I forgot and I was standing on that when I dropped this. So, yeah, it transformed it. Let me get it. Let me get a stone. There we go. And yes, it does seem to be working. So I can leave this one on top for now and have it powering. And you can see the little timer on the right. And there, it's complete. And now it's saying that it needs, uh, not two. Uh, I hate it when it always takes two out. It's saying that you need to drop one of these on here and then click it with the, uh, the wand of the forest. So if I toss this on, then click it, I get myself two runes of earth. Excellent. And then as before, a feather, string, carpet, mana powder, and mana steel ingot, and that should start making me the air rune. And same as before, I'm going to need one of those so that when it's completed, I toss it on there and click with the uh, wand of the forest. There we go. Click, and I get two of those. And then I can craft the rest just in a regular crafting altar, but I do need at least one mana steel in order to craft that. Make myself a sojourner's sash. Lovely. Okay. Scrolling down, I can put this in the belt slot, and it uses mana very, very slowly from your tablet in your inventory, and I now have a little bit more speed to get up and around, and I automatically can step up on surfaces. This is really nice. Oh, that makes it so much easier to get around the base now. I love it. Now, there's plenty more I want to get into with magic, like, you know, the Globetrotter's Sash, but that does require fighting a, a certain... Uh, boss type character from Batania and uh, I am powerful enough that I could easily overtake that one but I don't really want to set up the arena for that just yet I figure that's going to be for a future episode and this will allow me to go even faster so ultimately I want to make a refinery to make the biodiesel but if I were to go back a little bit further I'm going to need an industrial fermenter to make the ethanol in the engineer's manual of immersive engineering under heavy machinery is the fermenter, which then I can click here and you get a list of all the things that you're going to need in order to build this thing. And with everything in my inventory, I should be good to go. You have this little thing that you can like kind of press play and everything like that for if you really want to. Oh, 
Okay, so it's on this side. Oh, I had it. I've got it facing the wrong direction. Or do I actually? This is one of the outputs. So it, it's got an output here and an input here. That might actually work quite well. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to go with that. I need to have uh, an input for this because this thing here is going to be making ethanol. And we've got a selection of different things that we can choose to make, but it, from what I'm looking at, I mean, honey is really good, but that's a bit a bit much uh, a bit more effort than I want to go through. I'm thinking glowberries is probably going to be pretty good, and I think I can grow those in something um, that isn't just uh, this. You know, like like your little uh, hopper botany pots. I could set up like a whole bunch of them and have them just outputting. But as one of the rewards that I got for uh, you know completing quests and stuff, I got three cloches. And I don't know how good or bad these are going to be. Uh, and I could probably take some of this stuff off. Where's the output for this? The output's on the front. Input on the back. Input's on the sides. Okay. So I could probably have this right here. I wonder if I actually have this facing that. If it will just directly output. I don't know without trying it. So let's do that. And I guess we can find out. I mean, it looks like it, it might work. I, I don't know. But it will need some water and other things like that. I don't know what the uh, the berries will grow on. I did put some in here in anticipation, so I'm going to take a stack of these. And we'll see if it takes just regular dirt to start with. So if I put some dirt in here, then a glowberry, and then it's going to need some power. I, I believe, if I remember properly, it's been some time since I've used Immersive Engineering. You can actually attach power here or on the top. Um, I think that there's like, yep, there's a spot here that you can attach as well. And what I think I'm going to do, because um, I think it's actually on the other side, on the back too. Yep, so I could probably put a power source back here, like uh, some kind of generator. I could put a lapidary uh, generator here, or, well, dynamo, I guess I should say and have this face into it, and hopefully that will be good. But it's also going to need water coming into it, which I think, yeah, that's on this side. Hmm. So what I could do is put some water here, and then I could put a specific water pump. I'm going to try the immersive engineering one, because I think it'll actually fit in here for what I'm going to try and do. I think that's good. So if I take the... Immersive Engineering Hammer, opposite side, fluid input, output. There we go. And then I could probably have a lever just on here to activate that, but it may also need some power as well. So I'm kind of seeing a little bit of a theme here because the power yeah, plugs in on the top. All right, let's try this out. So I'm going to have a chicken down here uh, that is going to be producing coal. Put the item pipe down on top, then I can put the lapidary dynamo on top of that. Coming around the side here, I can then have things piping out from here into the lapidary dynamo. Oh shoot, that that's a cold chicken. I don't want a cold chicken. I want a diamond chicken for the lapidary dynamo so that it can keep up with it because right now it's only 40 RF. There we go, okay. Which, I don't know how much this is going to use. I don't remember, actually. And I'm not going to go with any fertilizer if it can be avoided. Um, I do, however, need to add a little bit of water. And thankfully, I've got some of these water eggs that I can just click into place. And create water. Oh, unless there's flowing water there already, and then in that case I can't, really. That's really annoying. Okay. Then I'm going to need a little bit of energy pipe to have this stuff hooked up properly. Let's see about putting some up here, then connecting that, coming over and connecting that. And of course, as before, I'm going to need to get up here and have it coming out to power these devices. That's getting power. That's getting power. Excellent. So then everything should be good, if I'm not mistaken. For it to start grabbing water from below and pumping it into here. Yep, look at this. We've got water, we've got power, and we just need the glow berries, which... Yeah, okay. All right, in a cloche, it needs a moss block. 
which I could make with either Manipulation Essence from Ars Nouveau or a Phytogenic Insulator if I already have one. Mm, but as I don't have one, I think we're going to go with Old Reliable, the potato, uh, because that's just going to save me a lot of time and effort right now. So <laughs> inserting that, it should start growing. I don't know that it's going to be that fast, though. Does it actually require fertilizer at this point? I thought that that would be enough. And a garden cloche, potato, dirt, and a, a, it's got power. Does it actually have to have fertilizer now? And I don't understand what is uh, what the problem is here, but I currently have water, power, potato, dirt, which automatically gets tilled into farmland being produced. And yeah, uh, apparently bone meal doesn't even want to be used either. I checked the books and everything and I don't find anything off. Either way, it looks like I'm going to need some more power to go over to this as well. Get this industrial fermenter up and running and let's get an upgrade in this dynamo. Here we go, one resonant integral component should give it a nice big buff. So it's now pr max production of 160 RF, which I could even increase that further up to like 640 if I really need to. In the meantime, let's toss some of these in here, and that's definitely not enough power. Okie dokie. Jumping up here, let's open this up and put in three auxiliary reaction chambers, which increases the generation rate but reduces efficiency. I don't care about efficiency because it's generating so much power anyway. And now we're producing 640 RF per tech. I think it's more than it actually needs now. Oh wow, did it just it just devoured those potatoes. Okay, let me let me get another another set here. A few stacks of potatoes and that should make some ethanol a little bit quick. Wow, that just drained that power so fast. Oh, is it because I don't have the, yeah, the uh, the energy cable is not strong enough. Let me get an upgrade in here, and that should increase the power. There we go. The, <laughs> the power was being throttled. My bad. So now it's currently pressing these or processing them into ethanol, which then can be piped out from here or up here. It's strange that they're both in the same spot. But that should work just fine, and I can pump that out into a refinery. So I found the problem. It apparently is this lever here. It's transmitting the redstone signal through this setup. So yeah, that, that's going to be a little problem. So if I put this here, I think that should still transmit the water. Yep, and it will allow this to continue growing. Yes, it is still growing. It's rather slow rate, but it should fill it up. It's a little bit faster than the... Uh, my current method, at least I believe it is. I mean, I've just got some regular old bone meal just jammed in here. I, I don't even need to have a crafter for that, I don't think. Because uh, this is going to produce more than enough, or at least I would hope it is. We're not done yet here. I still need to make a multi-servo press so that I can make plant oil. Making one of those should be relatively easy. It's just a matter of trying to figure out where to have it placed. I'm going to have it facing this way for the moment and the reason being is because I think I need to make also a refinery in order to turn both of these two outputs into biodiesel and as you can see it requires a lot of scaffolding some pipe a few uh, different kinds of engineering blocks looks like we've got a few more and this is the block that I'm going to want to click on in order to convert it with some more sheet metal Yep, okay, let me just assemble this in place, and it, oh wait, it looks like the the pipe outputs are on the sides. I thought that they came out the fronts at some point. Ooh. And there we have it, one refinery, as simple as that. Uh, now I just need a little bit of input and output stuff going on here so that I can have these fluids going into this part. And that should do it. When I look in here, the ethanol is filling up. It can hold up to 24 buckets of one type or the other. And then it looks like it can hold 24 buckets of the output as well. And as this, yep, it's producing more ethanol and it's also exporting it. This is good. So then that multi-servo press, I'm going to need it to be about here, I think. That's probably a good spot for it. And that's not all though. I mean, obviously I can have this uh, export into the refinery, but I'm going to need something to grow the seeds that I need, which I think a phytogenic insulator is going to be the item I want. Crafting one of those, I should even be able to put this directly on top, and I think that'll still work. I just need to have the power coming in from the other side. 
So let's try putting in some industrial hemp seeds in here. It doesn't have any kind of phyto grow or bone meal or anything like that to enhance it, but you can see that it's going to go a bit slow, so maybe I can increase that speed. With, of course, another resonant integral component, uh, and that definitely makes things go faster. Yep, I was worried about that. The water is going to go down. All right, the opposite side is now fluid output, and I should with the power going in, redstone signal and everything, be able to give this thing some, uh, a bit of some water just by having input on the back. Yep, there we go. That's much better. Now if I put the hemp seeds in here, if you noticed before, uh, yeah, the augment's still in there. And let's turn this back on to ignored. It should make it, but then the seeds themselves go over here. So we're going to need to be able to recycle that, probably with an augment. All right, let's see if this works. I believe that this should make do with uh, re reusing the products, maybe transferred to input on process completion. So I think it'll constantly keep on reusing the same thing. Yep. Now here's the problem I think that I'm seeing though, is that this is just going to be making industrial hemp fiber instead of the seeds that I need. Hmm. Maybe I can boost that. There we go. Increases non-primary item output production. Hmm, I'm not sure that that's really what I want either. I might switch this out for something else. So let's try these auxiliary process sieves. And I think that that should increase the output secondary product by 15%. Should. I mean, it, it's, it's a process here. In the meantime, I should probably set up the multi-servo press to accept an input from the side and this output on the side as well. Um, I could also then have an automatic input. Yep, and it grabs seeds. But is that going to destroy those seeds? Oh, there we go. That works. And then I can have some kind of void trash can underneath uh, for the industrial hemp fiber because I already have that being made and I've got a huge quantity of it. So let's put this trash can here. Oh, I've got a power cable there. Interesting. Uh, and I want to filter this so that only... Industrial hemp fiber goes in there, and I want it to whitelist that. So it should feasibly take that out if it starts outputting down below. On the next process run, it should do that. Oh, it helps if I put auto output, and then it'll do that. There it goes. It all disappeared into the trash can. Perfect. That's what I was wanting to do. So I can just actually trash the ones that I have, and... Let's just put this cobble back for the moment. And I do have plenty in there, but nothing's going on here. Let me just pop in a bunch of the seeds I already have. It's going to be a very slow process. I could probably set up multiples of these, or I could even use the cloches because I think those actually produce more seeds ultimately than these ones. But this is the plant oil that I need. So then I just need to output that, auto output, into this. And you can see we're starting to get some plant oil. Now here's the other thing that we need. We're going to need either saltpeter or nitrate dust. Nitrate dust is something I completely overlooked. It's it's made from a crusher. Um, yeah, and <laughs> I, I don't have a crusher set up here, and that's going to take me way over my time limit for today's episode. Uh, but I think that this is a good start. I'm I might test um, like a, a garden cloche setup with uh industrial hemp seeds in like may maybe we'll we'll try that out next time and see if that's producing more uh than the phytogenic insulator is because this is still a, a rather slow process and it's it's only giving one every like third attempt or something like that so we, we might give that a go next time and uh see if that works any better maybe set it up in like an isolated area and then and then give it a try and then maybe we'll set up a uh, crusher i'm not sure where i'm going to set it at this point because <laughs> this stuff's going to be messy I, I just want to put a barrel here and have things done but there's apparently another catalyst that is going to be needed for me to make the biodiesel that i require anyway if you enjoyed this episode please be sure to give a like comment subscribe and as always don't be afraid to stop by on twitch or visit our other youtube channel mischief of mice 2 where we upload our vods from twitch and uh, until next time, folks, I'll see you.